Hello and welcome back to The Learning Curve. Are you struggling with IGCSE chemistry? In this video we'll break down common past paper questions, explaining the answers step by step with key tips to help you ace your exam. Let's dive in! Question 1. Atomic structure and the periodic table. Define atomic number and mass number and explain how they relate to the periodic table. Pause the video and give it a try. When looking at any element in the periodic table, we can see two numbers. The smaller number is the atomic number and the larger number the mass number. The atomic number is the number of protons in an element and the mass number is the sum of protons and neutrons, also called the nucleons. Elements in the periodic table are arranged by increasing atomic number. Pro tip. Remember that the number of protons and the number of electrons is equal for neutral atoms. Take carbon as an example. Carbon has the atomic number 6, meaning 6 protons and 6 electrons. Question 2. Ionic and covalent bonding. Describe how sodium and chlorine form an ionic bond. Pause the video and give it a try. Sodium is a group 1 metal, so it has one valence electron. It loses it to get a full outer shell. Chlorine, on the other hand, is a group 7 nonmetal. It has 7 valence electrons and it likes to gain one electron to complete its shell. So, sodium donates one electron to chlorine, forming Na and Cl. Those two ions have opposite charges and are attracted to each other, forming an ionic bond. Pro tip, metals always lose electrons and nonmetals always gain electrons. Question 3. Chemical reactions and equations. Balance these equations. C4H10 plus O2 reacts to CO2 plus H2O. Pause the video and give it a try. Here it makes sense to start with carbon. Notice that there are four carbons on the left-hand side and just one on the right-hand side. So to balance, we need four CO2. Next, we can see that there are 10 hydrogens on the left-hand side, but only two on the right-hand side. So we need five H2O. Lastly, we have to balance oxygen. We have four CO2 and five H2O, that makes a total of 13 oxygen atoms on the right hand side. In order to balance this, we need 6.502 molecules. Since we are not allowed to have fractions in our balanced equation, we have to multiply the whole thing by 2. So our final answer is 2C4H10 plus 13O2 reacts to 8CO2 plus 10H2O. Here's a tip for balancing equations. Try to always balance in this order, metals first, then non-metals, and finally oxygen and hydrogen. Question 4. Acids, bases, and salts. What is the ionic equation for the reaction of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide? Pause the video and give it a try. Here it makes sense to separate the acid and the base into its ions. Hydrochloric acid splits up into H plus and Cl minus. Sodium hydroxide splits up into Na plus and OH minus. Now let's rearrange those ions. Positive ions like to pair with negative ions, so sodium will pair with chloride and H plus will pair with the hydroxide. As sodium and chloride are spectator ions, meaning they can be found in the solution both before and after the reaction, they can be disregarded. So the final answer is H plus plus OH minus reacts to water. Remember, always cancel spectator ions when writing ionic equations. Question 5. Electrolysis. During electrolysis of molten lead 2 bromide, what forms at the anode and cathode? Pause the video and give it a try. The anode, which is the positive electrode, attracts negative ions. So Br- is attracted and bromine gas is formed. The cathode, on the other hand, is negative and therefore attracts positive lead ions. So the final answer is anode, bromine gas is formed, cathode, lead metal is formed. Question 6. Rates of reaction. How does increasing the temperature affect the rate of reaction? 
Pause the video and give it a try. At a higher temperature, particles move faster. That means collisions happen more frequently and with more energy. So therefore, the final answer is increasing temperature increases collision frequency and energy, speeding up the reaction. Remember, higher temperature, higher concentration, higher surface area and catalysts increase the rate of reaction. Question 7. Energy changes in reactions. Is bond breaking exothermic or endothermic? Explain why. Pause the video and give it a try. This question is quite simple. Just remember, breaking bonds needs energy and making bonds releases energy. So therefore, breaking bonds is endothermic and making bonds is exothermic. Question 8. Gas loss and molar volume. What volume does two moles of oxygen gas occupy at room temperature and pressure? Pause the video and give it a try. Here you need to keep in mind that one mole of any gas has a volume of exactly 24 cubic decimeters at room temperature. So for two moles we have to multiply it by two. Two times 24 is 48 cubic decimeter. Question 9. Organic chemistry. How can you distinguish between an alkane and an alkene? Pause the video and give it a try. This common IGCSE chemistry question requires you to know that alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons containing a double bond. To test for double bonds we use the decolorization of bromine water. When an alkene is added to bromine water the solution changes from orange to colorless confirming the presence of a double bond. This reaction happens because the bromine molecules react with the alkene forming a colorless compound. Alkanes, on the other hand, don't react with bromine water, so the solution stays brown-orange. Pro tip. Remember that alkenes are unsaturated and can react with halogens. And that's it! We've gone through common IGCSE chemistry past paper questions with detailed explanations and exam tips. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and visit our website for more chemistry revision resources. See you in the next video!